So you're thinking about investing in real estate. Which is better, a long-term rental or a short-term rental? Let's take a look. I'm Jenny Hendricks at Century 21 Prestige Realty. And let's talk about the benefits of long-term rentals versus short-term rentals. Which one is better? Well, like a lot of things, the answer is it depends. So let's talk through some of the pros and cons of each. First, let's determine what your goals are. Is it to maximize your profit? Is it to have passive income with very little personal involvement? How much time do you want to spend managing your rental property? And how much profit do you expect to get out of it? I recommend starting with research in whatever market you are going to be purchasing in. Having good data is always going to create a better result. So questions to think about. How is the supply? Are there a number of long-term rentals available or are they more scarce? Uh, what are the monthly rents? Are they going up? Are they going down? Have they stayed pretty static, you know, over a certain period of time? What is the vacancy rate? Um, what can you expect to build into your formula as far as what the time is between tenants? Where do you find this information? Well, a local realtor, of course, can help you. You can also research online with platforms such as Rently, Rentler, uh, Zillow. You can look at local property management websites. They're going to have data that's just available in, for anybody to look at. How about short-term rental data? Where do we find that? Well, let's talk about what maybe the hotel capacity is in the, the area that you are looking to purchase. Now, keep in mind that it might be a, a, a short-term rental customer, might be a slightly different customer than one who would prefer to stay in a hotel. I know depending on things like the length of my stay, the number of people in my group, whether we want to cook or if we're planning on eating out all the time, what different amenities uh, are we looking to take advantage of. Some people might be hotel people and some people might be overnight rental people. They're the same people, but in different circumstances. So do a little bit of research on, you know, what is the local hotel scene in the area that you wanna purchase in and what are uh, Airbnb rates or VRBO rates going for. Is there a venue or a specific attraction near where you want to invest? Um, in my area, in Southern Utah, of course, we have a large tourist population in the summertime. Many of them love to stay in those short-term rentals. It accommodates a larger group, uh, you can cook. There's sometimes uh, great amenities nearby. So sometimes that's a really, really good fit for people coming to the area. Also, there's a ski resort here. We've talked about Brian Head before. And if you want more information on Brian Head, it's just a killer little resort. Uh, click here and I did a whole entire uh, video on Brian Head. Great, great place. And Brian Head is just killing it right now on short-term rentals. So. Look at those kinds of things. Talk about, you know, what amenities do you want? What's the vacancy rate for those Airbnbs there too? Um, look at the, the seasonality of the short-term rentals. So for example, I'm gonna go back to Brian Head. Their ski season runs from about the end of November, about Thanksgiving through about mid-April. Um, then there's sort of a shoulder season where there's not a lot of activity at the resort, but then starting in like end of June, first part of July, they've got a really great summer uh, package or, or summer events put together where uh, the short-term rentals, those overnight rentals really start to pick up again. So make sure that if you're looking into a short-term rental that you're also putting the seasonality into your equation because your expenses, um, depending on what they are. So if you have a mortgage or something like that, those expenses are going to continue regardless of whether you have guests in there or not, of course. 
uh, you can talk to a short-term rental management company in whatever area that you are looking to invest in and they can give you really, really good data about what to expect as far as vacancy rates, um, average rental rates and so forth. Uh, I use a company called Vacasa and I, I can call them and they can tell me exactly what income I should expect um, based on if I'm buying say a, a one bedroom or a two bedroom or a, you know, a, a larger property and, and so forth. So really, really good data is available. Make sure you're doing that research when you're uh, making that decision. Okay, speaking of property managers, you need to have a good plan for property management. Whether it's a long-term rental or a short-term rental, you need to go into this understanding what those uh, expenses and impacts are going to be. So are you going to manage it yourself or are you going to hire a property manager? Think about things like, will you have time to take phone calls, uh, schedule showings or schedule bookings if it's for a short-term rental? Will you be cleaning? in between tenants, or do you have a cleaning service that you can call and will be available when you need them to be? Um, obviously, on a short-term rental, there's a much more intense time commitment because you're turning, you know, possibly every few days uh, in the busy season. On a long-term rental, hopefully you get, you know, probably a 12-month contract, and so the rate of activity for all of these things is, is much, much lower. Um, how will you handle deposits, contracts, all the legalities of renting out a property? Both long-term and short-term, you're going to want to understand what those legal implications are. You're going to be dealing with deposits, other people's money. You've gotta have a really good plan for that. Or if you're going to hire a property manager, um, you know, make sure that uh, they have a history of doing what you want that property manager to do with your property. Um, check with local property managers to compare services, compare fees, and remember the least expensive may or may not be the best fit depending on what you want to do with your property. So especially if you're looking into short-term management, really dig into the details of what is included in that property management fee. It's going to be a lot higher fee for the short-term rental than it is for a long-term property manager. Um, most of the time in that short-term property management, that fee is going to include the cleaning, um, it's going to include the contract management, it's going to include handling the deposits, the rents, and some of them also have a built-in sort of algorithm that will change the rental rate based on what else is happening in that market and that helps max, uh, maximize the occupancy. So ask all those really, really good questions about what is the fee and what is included in that fee so you're not surprised later uh, with having to come up with some out-of-pocket expenses. Okay, it is also important, of course, to have a good understanding of what other costs are going to be on you as a landlord. So in long-term rentals, for example, um, the tenant will typically pick up a portion of the utilities. In our area, it's common for the tenant to pay for the gas, the power, um, sometimes the sewer water and trash, other times the landlord covers that. In a short-term rental, of course, the landlord is going to be responsible for all of those costs. So make sure that you're including all of that when you're doing your map. In a long-term rental, you'll typically furnish appliances. In a short-term rental, of course, you'll furnish the appliances, but you're also going to furnish it as well. And you will include things like linens, uh, dishes, paper products, um, some some condiments, you know, things like that, that, that people will expect to have in a short-term rental when they're staying there. So create a detailed budget of expected revenue and all of the expenses, including your time commitment as well to, to really determine the best fit for you. Other details to include in your budget are things like insurance, um, tax implications, 
Uh, is there going to be income tax? Are there local occupancy taxes and fees that you need to be aware of? For example, some uh, municipalities will charge a transient room tax on the Airbnb. So make sure you're putting all of those numbers into your map and understand what you are going to be paying for and what your revenue is really going to be. I do want to emphasize that it is really, really important to make sure you've got a good understanding of all local and state ordinances, laws, as well as potential HOA restrictions. Don't go looking in a place and, and, and get invested into something and then find out later that there's restrictions on the way you want to use that property. Whether it's a long-term or a short-term rental, look for restrictions on the number of tenants that can occupy. Are there parking restrictions? Uh, you know, the number of cars that can be in any particular uh, driveway or place, or is there off-street parking? Um, or whether or not a short-term rental is even allowed in a particular area. Some municipalities are pushing back on short-term rentals. Um, so make sure you're asking those really good questions and have a good understanding of, of what the local ordinances and HOA restrictions are going to be. So really, either a long-term or a short-term rental can be a great source of revenue, a great source of profit, great side hustle, and you know, maybe you wanna have both in your portfolio. A lot of people do. They kind of cover some gaps for each other. It's really just a matter of working within your comfort level, your experience, and what your research tells you is going to be the best way to accomplish your goals. I love investing. I love educating about investing. I love talking about investing. Please let me know if I can be a resource for you. I am Jenny Hendricks at Century 21 Prestige Realty. We'll see you soon.